Most people say the Paramount War Saga started with Saba Odi. Nay, I say, with all the bombs dropped at the end of the Water 7 Saga, and then the fight between Blackbeard and Ace that immediately followed, I say the Paramount War started with Thriller Bark. Because of the scope of adventure in One Piece, it can often get away with meshing other genres to create islands that, on paper, are cliche, but are unique to that world. I actually wish it did this more often instead of getting trapped in the same formula for multiple arcs. I don't know how well regarded Thriller Bark is, but I absolutely love it. And I'm not an easy lay for this stuff. I am really sick to death of zombies, and this arc is full of zombies and ghouls, and it's effectively a giant ghost ship in the middle of the Grand Line's equivalent to the Bermuda Triangle that's so large, it gets mistaken for an island. That's actually really interesting, and something the series hasn't done before or since. The other major thing I love about this arc is the art. Oda went all out putting all these little details into all the designs and the result is some of the best art and panel work in the manga's 20 year run. Now, I can see some complaints particularly with the villains. Gekko Moria is an in-between villain. He's not meant to be this big bad, but he works because early on he eliminates the best three fighters. This puts a lot of pressure on Chopper, Robin, Frankie, and Usopp, especially Usopp, to do all the heavy lifting alongside newcomer Brook. Which is fan-freaking-tastic because of what happens in the following arc, and the fact that these characters that steal the show in this arc have had a hard time staying relevant since. The Saba Odi arc follows this and it's a bit of a mess. It tries introducing way too many characters all at once and hits a lot of notes and tries balancing that with some really heavy themes of racism and slavery. Once again, it leads to some of the most powerful moments in the series, but lacks the connective tissue that, say, Water 7 or Alabasta had. Oda introduced the supernovas just to try to make the arc more interesting, and I think the arc would have been much better without all nine of them. Either that string of moments should have been cut, or more preferably, the Sanji mistaken identity gag should have been nixed. Showing up, dealing with the Celestial Dragons, and fighting Kizaru and Kuma would have been just fine. Then, uh, Amazon Lily is an arc. Sometimes I forget it even exists. The rest of the saga sticks with Luffy as he gets dragged into the impending war between Whitebeard and the Marines, a war his brother Ace is the inciting incident of, and Amazon Lily is just where Luffy crashed after the fight with Kuma. Boa Hancock is pretty cool when she's with Luffy and borderline insufferable under any other circumstance. I like how this arc gets tied in with what is going on in the wider world, what was discussed and showed on Saba Odi, and what will happen when the Straw Hats reach Fishman Island. The arc just lacks any big memorable moments to make it stand out against everything that surrounds it. Then Hancock helps Luffy infiltrate the underwater prison of Impel Down. And it's at this point I remembered that this was dead center in a solid two years worth of publication where the Straw Hats were separated and a lot of pressure got put on Luffy. And I'm glad to report that he stands strong just fine on his own. Impel Down is a murderer's row of good ideas being dragged down by humor that doesn't land as much as it thinks it does. I absolutely love how much this arc showcases Luffy's charisma. His ability to make friends of enemies is something that hadn't really come up before, but here he is, partnering with Buggy, Mr. Three, and Crocodile of all people. Alongside Ivan Kov and Jean Bay to create a crew that would put the actual Straw Hats to shame. And together they turn the world on its head by leading the first mass breakout of the underwater prison. The climax of the saga in the biggest climax of the series to date is Marineford. This is the best look at the end game we've ever gotten and it changed the shape of the One Piece world forever. If Impel Down was a who's who of allies and enemies to Luffy, Marineford is a who's who of those that stand at the top. All of the warlords, the admirals, the whitebeard pirates, a seemingly infinite number of marines, Blackbeard, Luffy's makeshift crew, Shanks, and even Kaido gets a passing mention throughout this arc. It serves to show Luffy what he's up against and how strong he's going to need to be to become the Pirate King. It's a sobering, dour, downright depressing turn of events punctuated by some of the best action in the series. My favorite of which is the moment Mihawk stands in Luffy's way. Neither one underestimating the other. Luffy doesn't have time to fight someone so strong and Mihawk is merely testing the boy's fate. And he's the first person to acknowledge what makes people like Luffy so 
deadly, potentially more deadly than Whitebeard could ever hope to be. He makes allies of enemies. If there was one complaint in this arc, it's the power creep. This is by far the highest caliber arc up to that point, but in hindsight, there's a few things that don't line up. How is Jozu, one of Whitebeard's top commanders, effectively in the same role Cracker or Jack have for their respective crews, when he can't even resist Doflamingo's puppet technique? How is Mihawk a rival to Shanks if Rose Vista can give him pause? This is peak One Piece for a lot of people and I can see why. None of the arcs mentioned here are really among my favorites, but there hasn't been many arcs since then I'd hold in such high regard either. Any's Lobby and Thriller Bark were the greatest victories for the Straw Hats, uniting them as a true family and showing they can accomplish anything together, only to be torn apart, shattered, physically and mentally broken by traumatic events, and in all that, the one with the least tragic backstory, the one who always smiled the most, is the one who gets hit the hardest. There is a flashback arc after this that shows more of Luffy's childhood, but I don't care about Sabo. This right here, having Ace get killed right in front of his eyes and being consoled by Jinbei, this is his defining moment. This is the tragic backstory, and what follows is the legend that would begin taking a more active role in shaping the future. I'm Mediocrity4, thanks for watching these videos. With Ruby Volume 7, My Hero Academia Season 4, and Quintuplet Season 2 on the horizon, it'll be a while before I get a chance to talk about One Piece again. But when I do, we'll be going to the bottom of the sea and going through the longest saga in the manga's history. Until then, thanks for watching.